Welcome to the Automator Plus. Uh, today we are going to be looking at files and folders within Extend Script. Uh, grab a jug of coffee and let's get going. Cool, welcome. Um, and today we are looking at files and folders. Uh, so if you haven't headed over to our GitHub page, please do so. Uh, we've got a few projects over here, questions, repo, blogs, and videos. And these are things that we are planning to do. And any input that you have for us or any suggestions for videos, you can just head over here and create a a ticket for that. This is the one that we have indeed now completed. So I'm ahead to go ahead and close that one. Um, the next one that we've got on our list to, to have a look at is these files and folders. Now files and folders is a native JavaScript uh, function method class and we are going to be utilizing those. So just be wary that we are with an extend script always using old extend script Egma script standard three, if you like to think about it that way. So things that you find online for files and folder classes within modern JavaScript might not always be a one-to-one -one mapping, uh, but we've got a nice little file over here for you in this issue with the link that you can find below. There's this beautiful document that the Adobe has done. Um, so it's this guy over here and the file object is on page 47 and the folder object on page 56. So if we jump over to there, we will see that. Cool. Page 47. The file object. Okay, so why do we need these things? Um, if you have worked on Windows and Mac, uh, you'll know that managing paths within the different operating systems can a bit can be very tedious, um, to say at least anything. Um, so in Mac, forward slashes are used to denote sort of a new directory um, and construct your file path. Whereas in Windows, you've got the backslash. Um, and then when it comes to coding, the backslash means other things. So you've got to have two backslashes um, and it just gets chaos. So the idea of the file and the folder object is to manage all of that for you in the background. Um, it also comes with a few nice uh, methods and attributes that you can utilize. So today we're gonna be looking at that. So uh, just to get a bit of a feel for it, um, there is also a link over here that will drop in the in the description um, that you can check out. Um, and this just chats about all the various things uh, that you can use the file and folder objects for. Cool. Uh, for us, what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna create this little variable repo dir to point to the repository, uh, this tutorials repository that we've got on GitHub uh, on my Mac and I'm using this little tilde notation, uh, which is short for my home directory. Um, so if you check out the, this little guy over here, um, you'll see that the home directory has got meaning in both the Mac and the Windows world. Uh, on the Mac Unix side of things, you'll have your forward slash users, forward slash username, but on the Windows side, this would normally go to your C documents and settings file uh, directory does depend on your environment variable. So if you've got Windows 10, Windows 7, these things might, might differ a bit, uh, but the tilde is usually a nice way to make modular code um, so that if you run this on your side, um, then this would also direct you to your home directory, as opposed to if I were to put in over here, my hard coded forward slash users forward slash lojlub um, directory, this code won't execute on your side as expected. That being said, um, your mileage might vary a bit on Windows with the code that I've currently got on here. Uh, but if you have any issues, give us a shout in the comments and we'll make a separate video just on, on Windows file handling. So what are we doing here? Uh, we've got our location here now of where my folder is that I want to point to. Now, instead of using the string that I've got here, I'm gonna go and create this new folder object. Um, so if we jump back into this uh, documentation over here, you'll see that you can create new file objects and new folder objects like this. So here we are creating a new folder object 
and storing this guy in there. Okay, so what? Well, because we've created a folder object, we've got a few attributes that we can access. Um, and this absolute URI is the one that we're gonna find a lot of use for. Um, and what that's basically doing in the background is creating a uniform universal, universal resource identifier string. And that's basically what you see in your URLs when you visit a website. So instead of having spaces in your URLs, uh, you might have seen sometimes it does a little percentage sign 20, um, and that's because a URL can't really have a space in. Um, so this absolute URI is a way to then use irrelevant of whether on Windows or on Mac to actually get this full string in nice raw format, and then we can manipulate that and rather work with that raw URI, and when we want to then convert it back to a file, we just pass that raw URI and we'll will get access to our file or folder um, irrespective of OS. Cool, so that's what I'm doing here. And then I'm just appending this to a forward slash forward slash image dot JPEG. Cool, so now I've got my uniform universal resource identifier uh, for my image one. And now I wanna create a file with that. Okay, so that's what's happening here. So what, so why? Okay, I'm gonna open these two alerts um, and I'll comment out these guys just to show you what we can do. Because we've now created this file object, um, it's got a attribute titled exist. So you can just confirm that the file that you are looking at does exist. And I'm just converting that to string to show in this alert. Um, so this exist returns a boolean and alert wants a string. Cool. So if I execute this guy, you will see that indeed I get a true because my image one does exist. And the next that we're looking at is the actual full path that the file is located at. So this FS name um, is the good stuff. That is your file system name. Um, so this will actually resolve all of the backslash forward slash issues. Um, so if you jump over to the documentation, you'll see this uh, exist attribute that we just uh, called exist tells us yes, if the thing does exist, keep in mind it's read only, so you can't go and not unexist a file. Um, and similarly, FS name is your platform specific full path name. Cool, so that's the, the one benefit that we get there. Uh, the other one is we can actually call execute on that. Um, so we are in extend script land, but if we call execute on a file object, um, extend script will go to your operating system and say, okay, well, what is the default thing that you will normally open this file with? Um, so I've got an image over here that's JPEG. So if I call dot execute um, on Mac, it's gonna go to that default previewer um, and actually, boom, there we go. Got some random image here um, that it does actually then open. So quite useful, um, you could think of extending this to, you got a Word doc or you've got some file or whatever that you want to recurrently open within Extend Script within Premiere Pro. Um, and this is a nice way to just create a shortcut for that. That is if we know the location of the file. But more often than not, you want to have a bit more modular setup and you actually want some open dialog that pops up, you go and select your footage, and then we wanna start processing all of that. So over here, we are looking at that. So luckily this file class that we've got access to has got this open dialog method that we can call. Uh, just to give you a bit of a, a feel for what's going on there, if we jump into this documentation, you'll see that the open dialog is this guy and it requires three parameters that we need to set. Uh, the prompt is the string basically that's gonna be shown in the open dialog, uh, the filter. Uh, so these can sometimes get you into trouble, um, kind of safer just to go with an asterisk, just to ensure that you know all files are available. On Windows, you might have to uh, add this full string, whereas on Mac, you can just put in the, the asterisk. And then multi-select is a true or false, so do you want your open dialog to be able to return multiple files or just a single file? In the setup that I've got here, I just created these three little dummy variables, made a little underscore in front of them to just be obvious that they are dummy variables. And this is the prompt, the filter, and the multi-select that I'm gonna do. And then we're gonna get the selected files actually returned to us in an array. So I am just going to put a little useless piece of code here so that I can set a breakpoint over here. And let's run this guy. 
Cool, boom, pop-up dialog comes in. Let's select three videos. And I've hit this breakpoint over here now, so we can go and inspect our selected files variable. There we go. And lo and behold, it is indeed an array of file objects, as you can see. Um, and those are pointing to the three files that I selected within the open dialog. So this is again just the start of things. Um, the, the world is your oyster after this. Now you've got access to all of these. Um, in subsequent videos, we're gonna look at taking that footage, putting it into Premiere Pro, adding it to a bin, um, that type of thing. Uh, this video is just priming you a bit using this file and folder uh, objects. Another super useful thing uh, with the file and folders is you've got common directories that you can access. Um, so for example, uh, the folder class has got this .common files. Uh, if you jump over to the documentation over here and we head to the folder object and we check out what is up with the, here we go. Cool, uh, so if you check out this common files attribute, you'll see that in Windows that refers to that uh, directory over there on uh, Mac, it's gonna be that. Uh, similarly, my documents will then reference your documents and my documents on Mac being that. So these are just nice useful things to always make some nice modular code that'll be portable to other computers and setups, um, but you know where you are relative to that setup. Cool. So just to illustrate what's cooking over here, let us run this guy up to there. And now I'm just going to ask for that. Let's check out our common files. So we've gotten this common files file over here. So you can see that is referring to that uh, location over there. Um, the desktop is my desktop and documents is my documents. My documents. There we go. My documents. Cool. Um, and then last little bit uh, for this uh, video is just this get files method that you can call on a folder object. Super useful. Um, again, I'm just gonna add a little useless code over here so I can set a breakpoint. And now we can go and check out files in my docs. So if we jump over here and we've got our files in my docs, then I've got a file and a folder attribute for each of the files chilling in there. Thanks for watching our video. If you like what we're putting down on this channel, uh, hit like, hit subscribe, hit that bell icon for notifications when we upload any new videos. Um, and if you wanna support the channel, please head over to Envato and purchase any one of our extensions.